Throughout the course of history, men and women have lived and died. Looking back from this place in time, it is clear that people long ago really did some really dumb things. And in order to understand how they died, we must first understand how they lived. These are the stories of how they died. Many of us have heard the story of the beautiful and exotic Egyptian queen who seduced both the mighty Julius Caesar and the heroic Mark Antony. But how much do we really know about her remarkable life and tragic death? Although she was born in Egypt, she was not ethnically Egyptian. Her family's bloodline can be traced back to Macedonian Greece and her family had ruled Egypt since the time of Alexander the Great. Her story has been told by both Shakespeare and Hollywood. Her empire included Egypt, Cyprus, and territories in the Middle East. This is the story of Cleopatra VII, the last true pharaoh of Egypt. Cleopatra VII, simply known today as Cleopatra, was born in Egypt in the year 69 BC. Her father, King Alides Ptolemy XII, and her mother, presumably Cleopatra V, had five children. Berenice, Cleopatra, Theos Ptolemy XIII, Arsinoe, and Ptolemy XIV. The Greeks that ruled Egypt during the Hellenistic era stress the importance of education for both royal boys and girls. Cleopatra, as well as her siblings, received the same education just in case one of the girls would become the ruler of Egypt. Because they lived in the city of Alexandria, Cleopatra had access to the great library and the best tutors. The first language that Cleopatra mastered was Greek. At the time, most Greek rulers of Egypt had chosen not to learn the native language of the people they ruled. Well, there is no record of them doing so. But Cleopatra had decided that she did not want to rely on others to translate for her. So she learned to read and speak Egyptian. In fact, according to historians, Cleopatra eventually learned to speak at least nine different languages. She also studied history, physics, astronomy, and alchemy. Due to his lavish lifestyle, Cleopatra's father owed a great deal of money to Rome. He struggled immensely to hold on to power. When her father died in 51 BC, the throne naturally passed to Cleopatra, now 18 years old, and her 10-year-old brother Ptolemy XIII. As was the tradition at the time, in order to solidify their claim to the throne and to keep the bloodline pure, the two co-rulers were expected to marry. Cleopatra, being much older than her brother, became the dominant ruler. About a year later, because of dissension in the palace, Ptolemy XIII attempted to seize the throne for himself. He tried to have his sister murdered. Cleopatra escaped and fled to Syria after her brother's advisors acted against her. The following year, Cleopatra returned to Egypt after she raised an army of mercenaries. She faced off with her brother's forces in a civil war at Pelusium near Egypt's southern border. During the same time, the Roman general Pompey had himself fled to Egypt. He was seeking refuge from his rival Julius Caesar. Ptolemy XIII took it upon himself to capture and murder Pompey by beheading in order to gain favor with Julius Caesar upon his arrival to Alexandria. But the exact opposite happened. Caesar was not happy with how his rival had been killed. But in the end, it had brokered a tentative peace. When Cleopatra learned of Caesar's arrival in Alexandria, 
she sought his support against her brother. She knew that she needed the support of Rome in order to regain her throne. So she smuggled herself into Caesar's room and pleaded with him for help. Since Egypt owed Rome a great deal of money and Caesar needed that money to defend his own throne, he sided with Cleopatra and together their forces outnumbered those of Ptolemy the 13th. He was forced to flee the city and it is believed that he drowned in the Nile River after being defeated in battle. Cleopatra's younger sister Arsinoe had also been captured for her role in the Battle of Pelusium and was granted sanctuary and banished to the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus. After the winter had passed, Caesar and Cleopatra, now lovers, returned to Alexandria where Caesar restored Cleopatra to her throne. She was then married to her other, much younger brother, Ptolemy the Fourteenth. Even though Caesar was married to someone else, he remained with Cleopatra in Egypt for a short time before leaving her with child and returning to Rome. Around the year 47 BC, Cleopatra gave birth to a son she named Ptolemy Caesar. He was known by the Egyptian people as Caesarian or Little Caesar. It was at this point that Cleopatra started to present herself as the living embodiment of the Egyptian goddess Isis, who was the sister wife of Osiris and mother of Horus. She dressed in the image of the goddess and carried herself in such a way in order to rule her people. A year or two later, Cleopatra traveled with Ptolemy the 14th and Caesarian to Rome to visit with Caesar. Roman propaganda from the time painted Cleopatra as a wicked temptress who used her beauty and feminine wiles as a way to get men to do what she wanted. But according to the ancient writer Plutarch, Cleopatra wasn't as physically attractive as it was once believed. In fact, ancient coins with Cleopatra's portrait picture her with a large, hooked nose and masculine features. For his part, the ancient writer claimed that Cleopatra's beauty was not unmatched, but it was her flowing and elegant speaking voice that created an irresistible charm that made her desirable. Cleopatra's presence in Rome caused quite a bit of commotion and shock to the Roman people. Caesar didn't even bother to hide the fact that she was his mistress, and many Romans were outraged when he had a gilded statue of her erected in the temple of Venus Genetrix. After Caesar was stabbed to death in the Roman Senate on the Ides of March 44 BC, Cleopatra was forced to flee back to Egypt. Not long after her return, her brother, husband, and co-ruler Ptolemy XIV died a seemingly mysterious death, and it has been assumed that he was killed upon the orders of Cleopatra. With her three-year-old son as co-regent, Cleopatra's hold on power in Egypt was more secure than ever. One of Cleopatra's greatest fears was that Egypt would lose its independence from Rome and trouble was brewing. Failing crops from the unreliable flooding of the Nile led to inflation and hunger throughout the country. Meanwhile, a power struggle was raging in Rome between Caesar's assassins, Brutus and Cassius, and his allies, Mark Antony, Octavian, and Lepidus. Both sides sought support from Egypt. Cleopatra sent four Roman legions that were stationed in Egypt by Caesar years prior. In 42 BC, the victors, Mark Antony and Julius Caesar's heir and great-nephew Octavian, divided power in Rome after defeating Brutus and Cassius. Mark Antony, who now controlled Rome's eastern territories, claimed Caesar's authority. He summoned Cleopatra to the city of Tarsus to explain the role she had played in the aftershock of Caesar's assassination. According to the story recorded by Plutarch, Cleopatra sailed to Tarsus in an elaborate ship dressed in the robes of Isis. She sat beneath a gilded canopy while attendants fanned her and burned sweet-smelling incense. 
Antony was instantly enchanted. He followed Cleopatra to Egypt, leaving behind his third wife Fulvia and their children in Rome. Even though they were very fond of each other, Antony and Cleopatra's relationship had a political element. Cleopatra needed Antony to help maintain Egypt's independence, and Antony needed access to Egypt's riches. According to ancient sources, they spent quite some time living a life of ease in Egypt, and they even formed their own drinking society known as the Inimitable Livers. The group would engage in nightly feasts and wine binges. But it was not all fun and games. Cleopatra was still jealous and wary of the threat her younger sister Arsinoe posed to her throne. She convinced Mark Antony to kill her sister. Arsinoe died on the temple steps when she was 21 years of age. Her murder was considered a gross violation of the temple sanctuary and it scandalized Rome. In 40 BC, after Antony returned home to Rome, his wife Fulvia died, and Antony was forced to prove his loyalty to Octavian. In order to prove his loyalty, Antony married Octavian's half-sister, Octavia. In the meantime, Cleopatra gave birth to twins, Alexander Helios, meaning sun, and Cleopatra Selene, meaning moon. Under Cleopatra's rule, Egypt continued to grow prosperous and in 37 BC, Antony met again with Cleopatra. This time he was seeking funds for his military campaign against the Parthian Empire. In exchange for her support, he agreed to return much of Egypt's Eastern Empire, including Cyprus, Crete, Libya, Jericho, and large portions of Syria and Lebanon. They again became lovers and Cleopatra gave birth to another son, Ptolemy Philadelphos, in 36 BC. Although the Parthian campaign turned out to be a humiliating defeat, Antony publicly rejected his wife Octavia and returned to Alexandria, where he and Cleopatra secretly married and signaled their intention to rule the civilized world together during a grand celebration known as the Donations of Alexandria. Antony also declared Caesarion to be Caesar's son and rightful heir, as opposed to his adopted son and great nephew Octavian. And then he awarded land to each of his children with Cleopatra. This declaration drew great concern from Octavian who was furious and began a propaganda war claiming that Antony was a traitor to Rome by giving away its possessions to a treacherous seductress and that they had planned to transfer the capital from Rome to Alexandria. In late 32 BC, the Roman Senate stole Antony's will from the Temple of Vestial Virgins and stripped him of all of his titles and lands. And then, Octavian declared war on Cleopatra. The war reached its climax with the naval battle of Actium. Cleopatra led several dozen Egyptian warships into battle alongside Antony's fleet. Unfortunately, they were no match for Octavian's navy. Cleopatra and Antony were forced to break from the fight and flee to Egypt. On September 2, 31 BC, Octavian's forces defeated those of Antony and Cleopatra. Alexandria was now under attack from Octavian's forces. Cleopatra retreated to her mausoleum as Antony went off to fight his last battle. Upon hearing a rumor that Cleopatra had died, Antony fell on his sword. He was carried to Cleopatra's retreat where he died. After burying Antony, and meeting with the triumphant Octavian, Cleopatra closed herself in her chamber with two of her female attendants. Cleopatra died on August 12, 30 BC. She was 39 years old. The means of her death is uncertain, but Plutarch and other writers put forward the theory that she used an asp, 
a poisonous snake to take her own life. However, the ancient chronicler also admits that, quote, what really took place is known to no one. He says Cleopatra was also known to conceal a deadly poison in one of her hair combs. With this in mind, many scholars and historians now suspect she may have used a pin dipped in some form of lethal toxin. So tell me, do you think Cleopatra took her own life because she didn't want to live without her beloved Mark Antony? Or was it because she did not want to live to see Egypt fall under the rule of Rome? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Before I leave you, I would like to thank all of the talented creators who created some of the beautiful builds in this video. I will leave their gallery IDs in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to hear more stories of how they died, please help my channel grow by giving this video a thumbs up, clicking that subscribe button, and sharing this video with your friends. Be sure to turn on the notifications so that you never miss a new story, and I will talk to you next time. Bye guys!